Welcome to Edison TV. I'm Vivian Parry and we're here today to look at Inconex, the Australian healthcare company and global biotech leading the charge in the development of FDA approved cannabinoids and psychedelic treatments for medical use. They're driven by a passion to find new treatments to alleviate patients suffering across chronic medical conditions. Inconex began researching the use of cannabinoids and psychedelics in 2018. Four years on, this ambitious NASDAQ and ASX listed company has 28 clinical programs underway and the world's largest portfolio of patented cannabinoid and psychedelic drug formulations. What's more, the company has identified a global addressable market for the treatments it's developing at 400 billion US dollars. So there's everything to play for. Time, I think, to hear from Joel Latham, Inconnex's MD and CEO, who joins us all the way from Sydney, about the journey so far and what lies ahead. So welcome, Joel. It's very good to have you here with us. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to join us. Pleasure to be here, Vivian. Thank you. Now, we're talking about cannabinoids and psychedelics here. So let's begin with the cannabinoids. Now, in the past, there's been a real stigma associated with their use. But what we've seen is industry and consumers voting with their feet. Uh, they're already very keen. Now we're seeing that the more cautious medical and scientific community, they're beginning to get much more involved and appreciative too. I, I, I agree, Vivian. There's been a stigmatisation there for, for quite some time now. And I believe that was due to the recreational market and a one-size-fits-all approach adopted by many companies in the healthcare space. We have worked very hard to remove ourselves from that stigmatization, and this is not a one-size-fits-all approach for us. We have developed targeted products to treat specific indications that have significant commercial opportunity post-clinical success. We have proven to the broader medical and scientific community that we are leading the way in the development of novel and alternative therapies. We are no longer looked at as a medicinal cannabis business. We are now a fully fledged biotech as we're developing new and novel proprietary formulations of the highest quality geared towards product registration and commercialization. We are clinically validating each of our assets and conduct our studies with the rigor required to achieve FDA approval. Given this, we have now gained the respect from the broader medical and scientific community. It really does seem a very exciting time for you, uh, particularly with this product IHL 42X, which is, I think is for the treatment of uh, sleep apnea and the potential initiation of FDA studies on for that on the horizon. So give us an update, if you would, on how that's progressing and how you plan to use those really encouraging results that you've seen in your Australian phase two trial. It is a really exciting moment. Uh, our phase two results were released earlier this year and truly exceeded all of our expectations. It provides us with an immense amount of confidence moving forward as we continue to work with the FDA to develop this exciting asset. We have had great dialogue with the FDA and the Inconex team is eagerly working towards opening our IND and commencing pivotal phase two, phase three studies. These studies will be multi-site, multi-jurisdictional and have approximately 400 patients included. This is a truly exciting project for the company as there are no registered pharmacotherapy options available to patients. The current standard of care, which is a device, has an extremely high non-compliance rate. We are well and truly disrupting a $10 billion industry and changing the way patients suffering from obstructive sleep apnea will be treated in the future. That's so interesting. And of course, and it's an increasing problem because particularly associated with obesity, which is increasing. And as you say, those CPAP machines are miserable for those people uh, trying them. Now, your clinical strategy is a really interesting one. At the top, I mentioned that you use uh, FDA approved drugs to accelerate development. And in particular, a pathway known as 505B, 
2. Tell us a bit more about that pathway and how it helps you expedite your market uh, for your assets versus uh, conventional new drugs. Well, you're right, Vivian. Uh, we have developed a, a unique strategy. As a board and management team, we decided on an approach very early on in the development of our programs that we wanted to make, truly make a difference in the lives of people suffering from our target indications that are currently have limited or no treatment options available. Also, a key focus for us was being able to provide shareholders with a significant amount of value and commercial upside. The best way to do this was to develop our novel products in the most efficient way possible. And the path that we chose is the 505B2 regulatory pathway for new drug approvals. Our development strategy centers on the combination of products consisting of cannabinoids and drugs that are approved for other indications. Our combination of approved drugs allow us to use the FDA 505B2 approval pathway, meaning we're able to leverage off existing data to potentially shorten our clinical development timelines, providing shorter time to commercialization. In doing this, we provide favorable outcomes for patients and shareholders. Now, I want to touch now on another exciting uh, development for you, which is your recent completion of the APIRX acquisition, which makes you a leader in cannabinoid uh, therapeutics. Can you give us some details about the synergies that uh, this acquisition provides, particularly in terms of manufacturing capability and portfolio expansion? Yes, so this has been a pivotal development for the company. Uh, there are synergies across both businesses. The board and I were looking at various acquisition opportunities. However, APRX were by far the leaders and the best fit for our company. Dr. Anastasov and Lekram Changegar, the founders of APRX, are truly trailblazers in the cannabinoid research sector and are highly respected within the community. We identified that the 22 assets that have been under development for some time and that have made great progress are completely complementary to our current operational structure. This now allows us to continually provide the market with consistent updates and pivotal developments as we have many programs running in parallel. Both teams share the same view. We want to create and develop products of the highest quality with scientific rigor, whilst working with the FDA and other major regulatory bodies towards registration. The value proposition of Inconex has drastically improved post the acquisition, providing shareholders with an extensive portfolio and many more opportunities to have a registered product and commercialized in a shorter period of time. To summarize, APIRX have completed several phase two clinical studies. They have a plethora of phase one and preclinical data, they have an extensive IP portfolio, which only builds on what we already have. And they've had favorable and encouraging interactions with the FDA on several assets, which allow us to build on those foundations already set. So clearly you're absolutely spoilt for choice there, but what are you gonna be focusing on in terms of prioritizing development? Uh, how are you going to, uh, how are you gonna commercialize those? Yeah, so part of the acquisition, there were 22 projects that we acquired um, and we've identified nine lead APIRX assets that we want to commence in a relatively short period of time in conjunction with our core six programs that we already had under development. In relation to the selection and the prioritization um, of these assets, we looked at five factors. We looked at positive results, commercial upside, current treatment options available, regulatory progress and feedback. And the final point was path to market. Here at Inconnex, we like to move efficiently. So we, 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 we're selecting the assets and the projects that enable us to move these assets along in an, in an efficient manner. In relation to commercialization, we will be leveraging off the positive clinical data that APIRX have been able to generate over previous years, build on favorable interactions with the FDA, and develop the lead assets in the most efficient way to commercialization. There are many aspects in developing a new drug and therapy. APIRX provide us with a head start as a lot of the hard work has already been done. Now, how are you gonna allocate resources across all those developmental programs? As I say, you're spoiled for choice. 
We are spoiled for choice, but we're fortunate enough to be in the position where we're ad adequately funded for the foreseeable future. Uh, myself, the research and the finance team have built a budget that allows us to develop our lead assets in parallel. So what this does, it allows us a runway of 24 months while we continue to run these lead assets, providing milestones and developments to the market. We're also able to leverage off some lucrative tax incentives here in Australia called the R&D rebate. So for all R&D activities here in Australia, we actually receive 42.5% rebate back from the Australian government, which allows us to manage our cash position moving forward. So now that we've acquired APIRX and added in another 22 assets, we will be transferring many of the research programs in the early stages over to Australia so we can take advantage of the lucrative R&D rebate. And not only that, we have an extremely loyal shareholder following that has provided great support over the years, particularly earlier this year when we raised $23 million through our existing ASX shareholders to provide us with the strong cash position we are in today. This was a positive outcome given the current broad market conditions and volatility. That's your cannabinoid side clearly going uh, very well, but let's now turn to psychedelics, which is the other half of you. Uh, you're now involved with Monash University on what's called the SciGAD trials program. Tell us a bit more about that and why it's so significant for you. Well, Vivian, this is a, a world-first clinical trial, which is significant in itself. The trial has been run by a team of internationally known key opinion leaders, prioritising scientific independence and rigour for best patient outcomes. We're in the process of coordinating two clinical trials as a part of our clinical development strategy, which is ultimately aimed at being the first to achieve FDA approval for our psilocybin therapy administered to patients with generalised anxiety disorder. In conjunction with our principal investigator, Dr. Paul Lignitsky, we've been able to develop our phase two study to a point where we expect to announce interim results from our phase two exploratory clinical trial in early 2023. Monash University and Brain Park have been great partners in developing this world first clinical trial. Given our strong relationship, there could be further opportunities that we work and collaborate on in the future to ensure that we remain at the forefront of alternative therapies globally. So stay tuned for that. Now, there's huge interest in this whole field of cannabinoids and psychedelics now. But can you, in, in summary, explain why Incanex is so well positioned to capitalize, capitalize on this particular market? We are well positioned, Vivian, because uh, we run the business as shareholders for shareholders. So we're extremely well positioned to provide shareholders with a unique opportunity as we're at the forefront of two emerging global sectors. We have news flow imminent with a diversified portfolio of 28 assets under development. And post the APRS acquisition, we now have the largest owned IP portfolio across the cannabinoid and psychedelic sectors in the world. We know that this has now put us on the radar of big pharmaceutical companies globally because we provide a significant commercial opportunity as we are targeting $400 billion in addressable markets across all of our assets. So success in just one of our programs provides significant commercial value. And finally, to finish with, uh, we are not a one-trick pony. Uh, as I have mentioned, we have validated and de-risked 28 assets which puts us in a prime position to succeed, being exposed to two major stock exchanges as a duly listed company, that being the ASX and the NASDAQ. So to summarise, it's an exciting future ahead for Inconex, and, uh, and I thank you for your time today, Vivian. It is a really exciting future. It's been wonderful to hear your progress and to hear about the roadmap ahead. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's it for today. And if you want to know more about Inconex, do read Edison's initiation report. And of course, you can also follow the stock on our website. And that's it. Bye for now.